Hello everyone, my name is Shinman Takazo and once again, thank you so much for tuning in for another Hero Review. Where we take a deep deep look into heroes that are in their final form and are freshly released in the original server. And like all other hero reviews we did in the past, this video is not really a hero guide teaching you how to play the hero. The goal here is to make sure that when a new hero is released, you get all the information you need and most of your questions are answered before you blow all your battle points or diamonds on that said hero. And this time around, we're going to talk about Lunox, the girl who can't decide if she's gonna be white or black. July 19th was the day I found out I was black. If you need like an in-depth skills guide or how her skills work, I've made a different video for that previously. Now before we begin, let's talk about her role. The game says she's a damage slash poke hero. So she's supposed to be dealing high damage and can do it in very long ranges, which she can. But in addition to that, she is also very bursty with the right items and combos. In contrast to that, Lunox also has a few weak that we will talk about later. So now, what are the reasons why you might want to buy this hero? I can only think of one thing, legs. But that's not the point of this video. In a couple of games that I played with Lunox, I noticed that she's very good in these uh, several things. Number one is sustaining a lane, meaning she can take some harassment early game and keep her HP up, making her not need to go back to base and not miss any golden XP from minion. Her passive is a wonderful thing, right? Darkness gives you offensive abilities and light gives you defensive abilities and also some damage. By keeping your passive on the light side by spamming skill 1 all the time to recover HP or and deal damage at the same time, Lunox can be very very tanky even at level 1. You can minimize damages from basic attacks from minions, from heroes, from uh, spells, and having more cooldown reduction will just enhance this ability. And this defensive attribute is so useful early game when enemy heroes don't have a lot of damage yet. Like, you know, they're level 1, you're level 1, their skills are level 1, still low damages. I mean, just look at this clip for a second. I was literally tanking damages from minions and two heroes here and yes, they got my HP low but with the help of skill 1 or her light skill, I know that I can regain that lost HP back and chill in the lane. While in the meantime, my enemies might have already used their regen, they still might be on low HP and that leaves them without any HP recovery abilities for later battles. Couple this up with demon shoes and you're sure to be staying in your lane for the entirety of the early game unless two or three three enemies jump on you and burst you down. Number 2, she does a lot of burst damage. At level 4, once you unlock your 4th skill or your ultimate, and since we're talking about her burst damage, we'll focus on the dark ultimate and this is one of the most high damaging skill with very low cooldown that I have seen in the game. Popping your dark ultimate and spamming your skill 2 on heroes can easily melt their HP. And this is because during the few seconds of you using your ultimate, the darkness ultimate, your skill 2 does not have a cooldown and the range gets much much bigger. Just like Leslie's power that basic attack whenever you use her skill 1. And to make things even better, skill 2 does additional percent magic damage to enemy hero's current HP. So yeah, this means that she can definitely hurt tanks and hurt squishies even more while using her ultimate. Getting fleeting time guarantees that this ultimate will have a 5 second cooldown late game if you get at least 1 kill or assist after using your ultimate. And finally number 3, she can be played as a marksman, like you know a marksman that deals damage. Now I'm not talking about getting marksman items or even using your basic attacks but like I said earlier using your dark ultimate and spamming your skill 2 lets you do continuous high damage on a single target. You can even harass enemies under their own tower with the range that you're getting with your ult. Just build high enough magic power items and stay behind your tanks and when team fights start pop your ultimate and spam whoever it is in your range while adjusting your position. But of course this isn't the only strategy available to Lunox. Like shown in this clip, you can also opt to do like assassinations via bushes once you have high enough damage. I 
You've been away for too long. And for you initiate retreat. An enemy. The combo I did there was I dashed in with the darkness ultimate dealing area damage upon landing and then I spammed skill 2. That was it and I think I had lightning crunch and equipped. Okay so far we have talked about very positive things about this double sided lady. So it's time to be real and tackle some kind of bad things that you might experience when you try to play her for the first time. Number 1. She sucks at killing jungle monsters before level 4. This is because her skill 2 only deals additional damage to heroes, not monsters or minions. Her skill 1 has HP recovery but it does little damage. You'll probably notice too that there is very little difference between the damage numbers you deal with skill 1 and skill 2 when attacking minions and monsters. Number 2, she has an average wave clear early game. What do I mean about this? She can't kill enemy minions fast enough. But she does the job eventually. I mean, most mages face the same problem except like Vexana or Harley or Selina. So I guess that's uh, okay. Number 3, she stands in place and cannot move if you spam skill 2. Spamming skill 2 after activating your dark ultimate gives you high damage. But you also have to think about the enemy heroes that are getting in your face and getting close. Lunox while spamming her skill 2 has to stop while the projectiles are shot out. So if you keep mashing down on that skill 2, you'll notice that you can't move at all even if you drag your movement joystick. This gives you a dilemma of whether to take advantage of the duration of your ult and spam your skill or change your position to avoid charging enemies but lose the chance to deal damage. But I guess Flicker could fix this or even just the right timing when using your ultimate. And finally, number 4, managing your passive. So your passive gives you access to two kinds of ultimates, right? I have not been talking about the light version of the ultimate because I use it mostly for escaping since it deals minuscule damage and you can't really cast skills or do anything else but move while in that form. But don't get me wrong, it's a really, really good spell. Nobody can hit you, you damage them for a bit and you can casually move into a safer position. Within the game, you will still need to use it a lot of times if you want to avoid getting focused or if you don't want to like die to those ganks or make clutch escapes during team fights. So here is where the difficulty arises. During team fights, you want to do damage with, with your skill too, but enemy assassins or fighters like Cho can easily get to you. If you have not been managing your passive and you've been spamming skill too, if you'd like to use your light ultimate to escape, you would have to cast skill 1 a couple of times before you can use it. This makes it really troublesome if someone's like chasing you since Lunox also stops a bit while casting skill 1 while you're getting your uh, light stacks to cast your ultimate. Now to remedy this or to fix this, try to balance your stacks where you only have one stack and cast your skill 1 and skill 2 alternately. This way you can switch between darkness and light ultimate with just one skill cast and you'll have the version of your ultimate that you need at the right time. Aside from that she's definitely squishy if caught or ambushed but that's just like every other mage or marksman so it's okay. So to summarize all of these, Lunox is a really good early game sustained hero. She can stay forever in lane if she wants to, just get demon shoes and spam skill 1. Upon reaching level 4, if you wish to, you can do effective ganks with her darkness ultimate plus skill 2 spam. And she can also escape losing team fights with her light ultimate if you have it ready if you have been stacking your skill 1. Her skill 3 is uh, meh. Didn't even talk about it because it's just a linear area slow. So use it in between your skills and it doesn't even contribute to her passive stacks. She has enough burst damage to make quick kills but has no stuns. But most of her skills have slow so you can, you know, perpetually slow them if you can keep hitting them with your skills. Lunox is pretty easy to pick up and use but would be a bit complicated to master especially if you want to use both of her light and dark sides efficiently. Because like I said earlier, need to pay attention to her stacks, her dark and light stacks. And again, legs. And here's a sample build. Try Flicker and Aegis spell with Mage Emblem. I'll be trying out Lunox in my streams, so make sure you catch my streams here on YouTube and also on Tamago Live. Just look for room number 1463099. I rate this hero 2. Like 2 out of 1. 2, two personalities in one chick. And this has been Shinman Takizo. Thank you so much for watching and see you again in the next video. Peace!